Next we will be talking about simplifying fractions. And what we're doing here is not terribly difficult, but it's a really big deal. In fact, it's such a big deal that sometimes it's referred to as the fundamental principle of fractions. And I'll, what I'll do is state this principle and then illustrate it by working a few examples. So here's the idea that is often referred to as the fundamental principle of fractions. If a over b is a fraction and c is a number that is not zero, then a over b, that fraction, is always equal to a divided by c over b divided by c. Okay, write that down. And let's think about this. I can have a fraction, a and b can be any numbers, and I can take the numerator a and divide it by some number, and then take the denominator b and divide it by the same number. And those will always be equal. So if I, in other words, if I divide the top and the bottom by the same number, the result is a fraction that is equal to the original fraction. And that ends up being a very useful idea. Let's take a look at these examples. 6 divided by 12, this will equal, watch this, I'm going to take the 6 up top and divide it by 6 and take the 12 on the bottom and also divide it by 6. And the key here is I divide by the same number on the top and the bottom. And watch what happens. On the top, 6 divided by 6 is 1. And down here in the denominator, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So this fraction, 1 half, is equivalent to the original fraction, 6 twelfths. And you'll notice that this fraction, 1 half, is simpler. It's using smaller numbers simpler numbers and that is generally preferable. Okay, Let's do another 4 over 8. Let's divide the top and the bottom by 4. So 4 divided by 4 and 8 divided by 4. Okay, In the numerator 4 divided by 4 is 1 and in the denominator 8 divided by 4 is 2. So again I get 1 half. 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. And, of course, the simpler way to write it is usually preferred. Okay, the next one, 8 over 12. Okay, both of those numbers, 8 and 12, both of those are divisible by 4. So let's do 8 divided by 4 and 12 divided by 4. Okay, 8 divided by 4 is 2 and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So as long as I divide the top and the bottom by the same number, the resulting fraction is equivalent to the original. And because I've divided, the numbers have become smaller. So I've reduced these numbers to smaller numbers. Okay, one more example here, 20 over 30. What stands out here is the 0 right there. 20 ends in a 0 and 30 ends in a 0. Both of those numbers are divisible by 10. So let's do 20 divided by 10 and 30 divided by 10. And in the numerator, 20 divided by 10 is 2. And in the denominator, 30 divided by 10 is 3. So 20 over 30 is equivalent to 2 over 3. And I've been writing this out, but a lot of times, especially with a little bit of practice, this step here can be done in your head you can probably mentally just think 20 divided by 10 is 2 and 30 divided by 10 is 3 and it's okay to go from here directly to there in one step mentally just doing this part in your head although if the numbers are large or the problems tricky writing it out like that can certainly be helpful here's another example write two fractions equivalent to 12 over 18 okay so let's start by writing 12 over 18 and then we want to divide let's extend the fraction bar here and we want to divide the top and the bottom by the same number well both of these are even numbers so they can both be divided by 2 so 12 divided by 2 gives me 6 in the numerator and 18 divided by 2 gives me a 9 in the denominator okay we're told to find two fractions equivalent to 12 18 okay we just found one 6 ninths let's find another so 12 over 18, and let's extend the fraction bar and divide them both. Let's find another number. 
Well, 12 and 18 are also both divisible by 3. So let's do in the numerator 12 divided by 3. That gives me 4. And in the denominator, 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. So both of these, the 6 ninths and the 4 sixths, are both equivalent to 12 eighteenths. So all three of those fractions are mathematically equal to each other. Now as we're working this, you might have thought, hey, there's an actually even better approach. Look at this. You could have said 12 over 18, and you could divide the top and the bottom by 6. Okay, watch this. 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 18 divided by 6 is 3, so 2 thirds. So I found actually instead of finding two fractions equivalent, I've now found a 3. But this one is actually the best answer because this is the simplest answer. And in general, the simplest answer is the preferred answer. If all, all three of these numbers are equal to each other, all three of these fractions are equal, the simpler way to write it is the preferable way to write it. And we call this simplest form. And we usually want to write our fractions in simplest form. And sometimes the problem is explicitly stated that way. Like this example, write 15 over 20 in simplest form. So what we, what we want to do is start with 15 over 20 and divide the top and the bottom by a common factor. And we want to divide by the greatest common factor. In this case, 5 is a common factor. So if I divide the numerator and the denominator by 5, in the numerator, 15 divided by 5 is 3. And in the denominator, 20 divided by 5 is 4. 3 over 4. Now, these numbers, 3 and 4, no longer have any common factors. I cannot do to this fraction what I just did to 15 twentieths. I can't divide the top and the bottom by the same number anymore. This has been reduced to simplest form. And this is sometimes called reducing fractions because we reduce the numbers. Or sometimes it's called putting the fraction in lowest terms, the smallest possible numbers. And when you get to algebra, simplifying expressions like this is pretty important because you start to deal with some pretty big mathematical expressions. And even if it's not explicitly stated like that, to put your answer in simplest form, it's generally assumed that you should. And whenever you have fractions, this technique of dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number, that is the typical approach for putting a fraction into simplest form.